Good morning, everybody. Uh, you'll be noticing that I'm wearing the same shirt as yesterday. Now, I'm not going to claim that I've washed it because I haven't. It is for continuity purposes only. <laughs> the fact is, I've got footage from yesterday which I want to slip into to today's edition. And uh, I can't think of any other way to do it. Otherwise, it'd be too obvious. And I haven't got two of these shirts. Okay, first things first. Uh, there was a slight error with not showing a graphic yesterday. I was making a point that I'm writing my memoirs and I'm thinking that this is going to be the cover to the book. Aha! <laughs> Good looking fellow, isn't he? Yeah, you see the likeness? Yes, yeah, so that's, that's my forthcoming memoirs. will be uh, available at all usual outlets and even in the Amazon jungle. <laughs> It's a wag. Right, uh, what's next? Uh, oh, somebody sent me this. It's a lovely thing from uh, way back when. It's uh, the, an advert for, for WD-40. Have I been set up here? Is this really from back in the day or is it a recent invention? Judge it on your own, how you feel about it. Right, what next? Uh, I think uh, we should see the results of yesterday's film quiz. A bit trickier from all accounts. See what you made of these. Are we there yet, Mum? Yes, yes, sit down and shut up and enjoy the film. Do we have to watch the adverts? Yes, we do, shut up. Yeah, well, here's the results. In at number 11. Is the Italian job, the original Italian job. No need to blow the bloody doors off. What do we have next? Jack Reacher, Mr. Cruz, up to his games again. Still on the cardboard box. How do you figure? Once I take out the leader, which is you? You seem pretty laid back. Type B. Gone girl. Which Amy's blood type? God, I don't know. I have to look it up at the house. You don't know if she has Don't worry, she'll be back. You don't know what she does all day, and you don't know your wife's blood type. Sure, y'all are married. Oh, classic, classic fun in the sky. Get busy living. Airplane. Redemption. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Followed by the best exotic Marigold Hotel. In honor of your arrival, a special welcome British roast for you all. Cook lovingly by myself and my most loyalist helper and friend. Oh, here comes one of my favourite films. You want the moon? It's Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it. Pull it Every down. time a bell rings. Listen up, and followed by Austin Powers. And Curry, Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. You get a, a couple in there, Jack Reacher, a bit of a, a bit off the beaten track. Anyway, how will you get on with today's? So we're up to the third part of four, three, uh, three down. This will be the third one, and there'll be one more tomorrow, and then we'll move on to something else. Do -do -do -do. All right. I am confident that you gentlemen will review without. The evidence that you have heard come to a decision and restore this man to his family. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! But they'll never take our freedom! 
A2, A2, A2. A2 what? How much is this? Toothpaste. What did I do? I lost a spring. Nobody puts baby in a corner. What does this action signify? As you entered, when you looked at the other human, what does it mean? We've been working on this for a while. It's a anti-gravity series. Huh? Huh? Ooh, ooh, ooh. There you go. Were they any harder? Okay, now I want to tell you a story. I want to tell you a story, and it comes back a couple of days ago. The subject came up of my father's E-type Jaguar, and if you remember, we had a photograph of him sitting on the bonnet of his car, and we had the photograph of my daughter sitting in the front of my car all those years later. So. I was always so jealous of my brother because he got to uh, have the drive down from Cheshire down to Cornwall in my far in the E-Type. What I didn't realise was they didn't have a trouble-free journey. The old E-Type was uh, prone to overheating with its big 4.2 litre engine. Uh, and meanwhile, I was in the back of a Morris Traveller Oh my God, 13 hours, oh, I always remember, was the uh, the length of time. And uh, it, was a, it was quite a trek, quite a trek. But what I do remember, what was number one, one of the years that we went down, the year that we stayed in the, uh, the house on the golf course, and it was this. The first line was, trailer for sale or rent what was the name and what was the year that that was in the charts the first line is trailers for sale or rent okay now the story the story behind this uh behind the <laughs> oh cat you are driving me up the wall you know don't you know i'm busy now listen <laughs> the story behind the etac was that it was it was uh one of the first in the northwest and i went to work at a, a garage it's changed names now but back in the day it was this place and it was called moss rose motors just across the road from maxfield towns football club it was a fiat dealers and i was employed in the spring of ooh, 1976 uh to clean cars because they were a fiat dealership and I'd collect cars and you know general dog's body but I got chatting to one of the mechanics who worked at uh, this guy. She said, yeah, you John Hope's lad? I said, yes, I am. I said, oh, Mr. Hope's. Oh, well, I've got a bit of a secret I can tell. Go on then, tell me. I said, uh, your dad had the first E-type Jaguar in Cheshire. Am I right? I said, yeah, that's right. Gunmetal Grey. Hey, that's right. I drove that car, he said really I said yeah i had to go and collect it from where it was made down south I said, yeah I said, so we stopped we stopped at a pub for a bite to eat and they came up and some bugger had hit it in the back it was dented in the back i thought oh my god brand new <laughs> brand new e-type so they carried on the journey it was still very much drivable so they brought it up and uh, he, at the time, he was working for a different garage. It was called Locomotive Motors in Macclesfield. And they were very, very top coach builders. Uh, and basically, they rebuilt the back end of this car. Never told my father. <laughs> Never told him. And he went to his grave, never knowing that his precious E-Type had been crashed. Just while we're on some of the, of the old man's cars, I, I, I'll come back to them again at a later date. But this last photograph is the lineup of cars from all the managers at his 
factory which made the fuses in on, at the end of Plymouth Grove in Manchester. And I don't know where the two number plates come from, but H78 and H96 were, were, were on the front of two 3.8 Jags. And my father's was the one with the wire wheels. And that, pre, that predated the E-Type. But I have to say, I did love the look of that car. Isn't that a smashing looking car? If you could have that in mint, mint condition now, uh, it was a, it was a, the Morse car on steroids. It was, it was absolutely beautiful. I do apologise for the <laughs> distractions. Listen, cat, I can't have this because everybody's watching. Thinking, what's that black brush? All right, <laughs> go away. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's my, some of my dad's cars. I mean, we had some other cars uh, in the family. And, uh, yeah, sport brat, brought up on a big LC Macclesfield. But I hope it doesn't make me a bad person. All right, OK. Right, well, look, on to the next subject. Yes, I've been, had a communications from uh, the government. They've uh, clocked on to my uh, podcast, and they want me to pass out a, uh, a government health warning. Not a government health warning. A message uh, from one of their spokesmen about, uh, about the pandemic. So uh, over to, uh, I forget, what is it? Eva Trubshaw, her name is, Eva Trubshaw, and she'll give you the, uh, the, the SP about, uh, about the virus, so you, there won't be any confusion. Yeah, I really don't understand why everybody isn't following the same rules right now. They're very clear, so let's take a minute and let's go over them again. First, you must not leave the house for any reason. Unless, of course, you have a reason and then you may leave the house. All stores are closed except those that are open. And all stores must close unless, of course, they need to stay open. This virus is deadly, but don't be afraid of it. It can only kill people who are vulnerable and also those who are not vulnerable. We should stay locked down until the virus stops infecting people. And it will only stop infecting people if enough of us get infected that we build immunity. So it is very important that we get infected and also do not get infected. You should not go to the doctor's office or the hospital unless you have to go there. Unless, of course, you are too sick to go there. This virus has no effect on children except for those children in which it affects. The virus remains active on different surfaces surfaces for two hours or four hours or six hours, but in most cases it's days and not hours and it needs a damp environment or a cold environment that is warm and dry in the air unless the air is plastic. Schools are closed, so you need to homeschool your children unless you can send them to school because you are not home. If you are at home, you can school your children using various portals and online classrooms unless you have poor internet, more than one child, only one computer, or you are working from home. Baking cakes can be considered math, science, or art. If you are home educating, you can include household chores within their education curriculum. And if you are home educating, you may start drinking at approximately 10 a.m. every day. If you are not home educating children, you may also start drinking at approximately 10 a.m. Masks are useless at protecting you against the virus but you still need to wear one because it can save lives. And in some cases it may even be mandatory, but also maybe not. You must not go to work, but you can get another job at which point you may go to work. Stay home. I don't know how many more celebrities we need to have tell you how important it is to go outside and take care of your mental health. There is no shortage of groceries in the supermarket. There are simply many things missing. You don't need to go buy a bunch of toilet paper, but you should buy some in case you need it. If you are sick, you may go out once you are better, but those in your household, they cannot go out once you are better, unless of course they need to go out. Animals are not affected by the virus, except for that cat that tested positive in Belgium in February, plus a couple tigers. The number of corona-related deaths will be announced daily, but we don't know how many people are infected because we were only testing those who are almost dead to determine if that's what they will die of. The people who die of corona who are not counted won't or will be counted, but maybe not. To help protect yourself during these times, you should be eating well and exercising, but exercising only eating what you have at home to avoid going to the stores unless you need toilet paper or a fence panel. It's important to get fresh air, but don't go to parks, but do go walk in other places. Just don't sit down unless you are old or pregnant. But if you do sit down, don't sit for too long unless you are old and you are pregnant, in which case you need to sit down. But if you do sit down, don't eat unless you've had a long walk, which you are allowed to do if you are old or pregnant, except for times in which you aren't. Don't visit old people. 
but you have a moral obligation to take care of old people and bring them food and medicine. And finally, no businesses will go down due to coronavirus except those businesses that go down due to COVID-19. I hope this cleared up any questions about what we should and should not be doing during this time. Please educate your friends and family with this information so we can remove any and all confusion surrounding this time. Thank you. Well, I hope that's uh, cleared out any uh, ambiguities up. So uh, somebody told me, uh, what was the name? Oh yeah, somebody was telling me a story about uh, husband and wife uh, go to a club together and uh, when they go in, they're sitting having a drink and they suddenly notice this guy on the dance floor. Unbelievable performance he's putting on, the old spins and flips and John Travolta moves, the full Monty. And uh, he notices that the wife's got a bit of a look in her face there. Is there something, you know? Oh, yes, yeah. Yes. Oh, Nothing. Go on, go on, what is it? She said, uh, I know him. Oh, really? How do you know him? She said, uh, went, without, went out with him in the 70s. Really? Yeah, yeah. Asked me to marry him. Really? Turned him down? Yeah. <laughs> really? Looks to be still celebrating. <laughs> No, that's not right. I shouldn't, shouldn't make fun of a message like that. Uh, <laughs> what else have we got for today? Stand by. A couple of days ago, I told you a police tale about a man in a traffic coat and a monster mask. Well, the sort of episode two of that, I think it, it took place after the initial one. And uh, on a bank holiday... Monday morning, we were on nights, and it got to about half past five, five o'clock in the morning, so it was light, four o'clock, four o'clock, half past four, as soon as it was starting to get light, and during the course of the night, uh, we'd been told information, breaking news, that a man had uh, escaped from Presswich Hospital, uh, and then the next report was that he was he was uh, familiar with the Ermston area, where I, near where I was working. And the next piece of news that we have fed through was that he'd stolen a doctor's coat. So, nothing. Then a, an hour later, we got news that the, the alarm had gone off at the, uh, the uh, Dave Hume Boys Club, which was near the golf course in Dave Hume. And that uh, display case of knives have been broken into and that one of the display one of the uh, knives have been stolen oh so it ramped it up and then all we needed was a report of a man in a white coat seat running across the golf course oh well, the next thing is you got half the bloody shift running around this golf course and uh, they set one particular lad up to do the arrest so I think it was in the, he finally tracked his, <laughs> tracked the offender down in the bunk, in a bunker just off the fifth green. And he, <laughs> and he pinned this big man to the ground in a white coat. And uh, as the man turned around and said, to, as he's been told he was being arrested, he, he turned around and told him, oh, you're too good for me, super cop. <laughs> But it's the fact we got the whole of the shift running around a bloody golf course at five o'clock in the morning on a bank holiday morning. I don't know. The things we used to get up to. Right. Got to be a little bit more to do tomorrow. So uh, look forward to speaking to you tomorrow. And uh, look after yourselves. Look after each other. And, of course, my message from my little piggy friend is that That's all, folks.